I want to welcome you all on that cheery note. Let's see. <laughs> Being a leader right now um, is uh, more challenging than it's been in a while. So thank you all for being on the front lines and learning more about how we can help you too, as well as local league leaders. Um, I want to just quickly, while other people are joining in, I just want to introduce to a little quick introduction. So I'll just kind of use my participant list and I'll call off your name. And if you could just quickly unmute yourself and say which league you're from, that'll help us kind of know who's all here. And then we'll hit the ground running here. So we'll, we'll start with Laura Helmer, who's also our co-host today here. Everybody, it's nice to see you today. Um, Laura Helmer, LWVMN president, and my local league is Eastern Carver County, which is on the west side of the Twin Cities and includes communities like um, Chanhassen, where I live, Chaska, Waconia, Victoria. And Barb Anderson. Hi, Barb Anderson. I am the treasurer on the Minnesota board, and I am also vice president of the Roseville Area League. Great, Lynn Lewis. Uh, I'm with the Dakota County chapter and I'm the voter service co-chair along with Tina Searstad. Great, and Kathy Peterson. I'm, 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 I, oh good, I'm, every time I get on, I, I don't have my voice. I'm always <laughs> muted. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that I'm, I'm unmuted. Anyway, I'm Kathy Pedersen, president of the League of Women Voters, Crystal New Hope, East Plymouth, and Robbinsdale. Very lovely. All right, Marty Mix. Yes, right, right south of you is Golden Valley, and I'm from Golden Valley. Awesome. And Barbara. I'm uh, president of Roseville area. Great. Um, and Becky Siegmeyer. Hello, I'm the co-president of the White Bear Lake Area League of Women Voters with the amazing Liz Lauder. The amazing Liz Lauder. We'll go to Liz Lauder next. <laughs> Hi, Liz Lauder with the uh, co-president of the White Bear Lake Area League of Women Voters with the fabulous Becky Siegmeyer. <laughs> and Leslie Waterhouse. Hi, um, I'm with Anoka Blaine Coon Rapids League of Women Voters and I'm the Action Committee Chair. Oh, wonderful. Great to see you. Uh, Linda Witte. Uh, yes, I'm with the St. Peter area, League of Women Voters, and I'm the treasurer. Great. And Mary Broad. I am with the uh, Woodbury Cottage Grove area league, and I'm on the board, but I'm not any in any particular leadership role. Just here to learn. Very great. Um, Thena Ross. Yeah, Thana from uh, Dakota County and treasurer and roster manager. Great. Sue Dosa. I know she was there somewhere. Are you there, Sue? I see you. <laughs> there she is. Did you yeah. call on me? <laughs> I did. Okay. <laughs> I met my my uh, daughter's house with grandchildren and dogs, so oh, I'm going out. Oh, you're kind. So anyway, just, my name is Sue, Sue Dosell, and I am the voter services co-chair of Wyzetta Plymouth area. Wonderful. Thank you. Go be a grandma. <laughs> That's great. Um, all right, Patsy Green. Hi, I'm Patsy Green. I'm uh, vice chair under Kathleen Peterson uh, with Crystal New Hope East Plymouth and Robbinsdale. And I'm also the acting voter mm -hmm. services uh, director for our league and um, secretary for state league. Yay, yay. All right, Tina Searstad. Hi everyone. Um, I am uh, co-chair for water services with Lynn Lewis for Dakota County. And I apologize, I will hide my camera and um, mute myself because I will be driving to Burnsville. Oh, wow. <laughs> I would love to listen to all of your ideas and and learn more. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Tina. Uh, hello, Adrian. I haven't seen you in a while. We're just introducing ourselves in our local leagues. Sure. So I'm Adrian Falcon and I am co-president of the Northfield Cannon Falls League of Women Voters. And I am excited to be back in a statewide league space. Yay. And Glenna Case. 
Glenna, you are muted. Hi, I'm in Minneapolis and um, I always have trouble remembering my unit. I think it's 41, uh -huh. might be something else. Um, <laughs> I have no formal role. I was asked to assume one and I declined because I felt like I didn't know enough about it to do it competently. So I decided to sign up for this to so that in the future I might not have to say no. Ah, wow, wonderful. Well, thank you and welcome, Glenna. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Gretchen Sable, just say hi and introduce yourself, your league. Except that you're muted, yes. Sorry. No I'm president of LWV ABC up here in Anoka, and I'm sorry I was late. So that's all right. I'm here now. And Hi. Gretchen's also, um, what's your official title with Ummer? Tell them your. Right now, I'm communication director. I used to be past president, but now we have a new past president. So I'm just communication director. Excellent. All right. And hopefully, most of you know me, Michelle Woody, the executive director. Um, for LWVMN and also proud member of Woodbury Cottage Grove area. Uh, did I miss anybody? Uh, this is great. We have a great group and we are gonna walk through some leadership essentials tonight and uh, get my screen shared here. All right, so um, a lot of you have already been a part of an August Academy, but again, for anyone who's new, we have designed these to begin more regular training programs and network opportunities for local league leaders and interested members. And um, I always like to put in the caveat that we're not here to supersede anything you do locally. If you have other ideas or other timelines or things, um, that is great. Listen to your local leaders, but this is really to help you understand what we have available from LWV US and MN to help you be successful. Um, so tonight we're going to kind of go through um, uh, these sections. One, we're going to talk a little bit about planning for your league, regardless of the role you're in. There's kind of a natural rhythm of things, and I like to kind of give this construct we'll talk about, about how to think about and plan for local league activity. And Laura's going to walk us through governance. Um, sort of what we do at the state level, but also to help you understand where some of those resources are at the US and, and Minnesota get, uh, level again, to help you with your own policy formation, uh, bylaws, and the critical priorities we have now on nonpartisanship and um, DEI. And I like to say, I really, you know, governance always like, oh, uh -huh. well, you know what? Governance is kind of like the rock star now, right? Because we really all have to be many role models of what it looks like to be good government. We all have that chance in our local leagues to show our communities um, how governance should work. So I feel like governance is hot topic again in a good way. Um, and then putting it in action, I'm going to walk you through um, several of the new, brand new, hot off the press resources we have available for you tonight. And then we'll answer questions and kind of do some sharing. So, all right, I am going to uh, quickly walk through a few things. Uh, while I'm sharing my screen, I can't see you very, can't see hands up and things very well, but I can, I can kind of watch the chat too. So if things come up. Uh, as we're going along, throw them in the chat. Otherwise, we will have some time for questions too after this section. And I'll keep an eye on that too, Michelle. I can, I can oh, see most people and uh, I'll watch the chat. Thank you. So um, just recently, and if you were part of convention, our, uh, we had a second century task force that really helped to um, look at our current strategic plan, which um, is still active for the next two years, and kind of update that. And we really put together these sort of uh, the League Threes, Priorities and People, what are our uh, kind of priority pillars for our work? And on the left, um, in the maroon and gold, it's supposed to be purple and gold, but it's kind of gold for colors, you know, um, we can have our lenses of, of what we're, how we're doing our work, being purposeful, being really important, which is being true to league, right? Trying to make sure we're holding up all those values of league, but then also doing that in a way that's inclusive and also sustainable. 
And this is really helpful when you think, use these lenses as you're thinking about your league activities. Um, a lot of times, like when we're doing um, candidate forums, you know, we, we've got our way of doing them and, and, and we do them. But what if we are thinking about, gosh, are there other people we could involve in our candidate forums this year that, um, that other um, more diverse voices that could sponsor, bring people forward to bring that inclusivity into it, into the work. And then sustainability, how can we tell our story about all the great work we're doing um, and within our things like our Canada forums and getting more and more people trained. So these are really important values you'll see as we go forward. I like to think too of our three work seasons. We have, um, when you look at this, think of it at the foundation base, we have annual meetings, council and convention, right? So as local leagues, you have annual meetings, we have council and convention, but that really is the cornerstone of our years. We're planning, we're electing leaders, we're um, planning our forums, and all of those are planned around these two big chunks of time, the elections and the election season, which now is actually starts really oftentimes, can start as early as, as February with um, caucuses, if that's a caucus year, and the legislative session. And so I think it kind of helps to think, gosh, we have these three big chunks a year that we're organizing around, but it also helps when you're thinking about assigning people activities to think of, you know, having people involved in each one of these sessions. And then we have um, also three new training opportunities to help with all of this. So our August Academy, which is this week, and we picked August because we really realized a lot of times we would do trainings tied to convention and council, but they, um, you know, a lot of times it's too soon, right? When we do them the end of of April, the new leaders are, most people are elected in uh, May and June. So we tried to kind of pick August as a time when most people have had their transition of leaders so that the new leadership or renewing leadership can be trained and also kicking off election season. Some on those even years when we have a lot going on, this would be a time where we we'll, can do more sessions to help everyone get prepared. And then our January jumpstart, again, based on sort of those seasons, right? If you think of that triangle again, now we have the session, but we have other things in January to kind of kick off. We have our rosters and getting ready for annual meetings, financial reports, but that legislative session, by having everyone together in January, we're hoping we can also bring more alignment around our local leagues with our legislative agenda. And then our base, which is our members, we really want to start to have all member um, a quick meeting on the evenings on Mondays, the second Monday of every month, which I, I do believe is the ABC annual meeting, Wesley told us, or your regular meeting, monthly meeting. Um, so, but what we want to do, and we'll tape these as well, and maybe it's the kind of thing where if you have a new member to say, well, you know, this month, skip our meeting and go to the new member orientation. Again, you all may have new I hopefully you have member orientations of your own, but again, our uh, orientation would be reminding them of things like, especially things like, hey, everybody knowing where your all member news is, knowing how to get to it, um, all those kind of good things. So we're really excited to start those as well. All right, okay. Then League Threes, we also have three kind of primary ways we connect with league leaders every month. And so one is the president's or leadership Zoom meeting. This is the first Thursday of every month at 12 noon. Um, we tried to pick a time that was, if we are working, it might be over lunch. It's always hard to find time. So we do record all of them and post them. Um, but again, if a president can't attend or if you're co-leading, um, you can juggle it around or send somebody else to attend. It doesn't have to just be the president, but these are really critical meetings for us because there's a lot of fast moving information sometimes so it's really great to get our lead leaders together again we have our all member news the second member monday of each month and i'm amazed at how many people still will say well i never heard of that and they're in leadership position so that's why we want to really uh, flag that for you um, so that you're sure that you're seeing and reading those 
And then we have other specific um, job leads meetings. So our voter service leads meet the second Monday at noon, our advocacy chairs the third Friday at two, climate change task force has started up. So again, we're every month we're trying to find ways to continue to touch base with all of you and help out and provide alignment. So now we're going to jump into governance. So I am going to stop sharing my screen and Laura will share her screen to talk a little bit about governance. And um, yeah, and so while Laura's doing that, I will also say what will happen is you'll all get emails next week with, for the sessions that you signed up for. And we will have links to the presentation in case you want to share that with anyone. And any of the uh, materials we talked about, the links we mentioned, will all be in those follow-up emails. There will also be a survey, which will, um, a brief survey, which we'll talk about at the end. And you are muted. Well, there you go. Yeah, not me. All right. Um, so I am going to take us to the governance page on our website. And um, before I do that, I'm actually if you so we have the link in the presentation for you. Um, oh, I don't need to back out. I don't. I guess um, if you were looking for this on your own, it's in the about category on the far right. All the way down at the bottom and it's labeled governance so that's how you get here and you'll find here things like um, our annual report for the state annual report our state league bylaws you'll find our legal and financial documents here our form 990 um, the audit form and our 501c3 status um, papers. And then there's also a section here called policies and guidance. And when you click on that, there's a whole bunch of policies and guidances here. And some of these you will, I think, also find on the member resources page, but this is a great place to come to for all of these in one spot. And over here on the left hand side, the finance and the staff and board, these are mainly policies and guidances and procedures that pertain to the state league, but they're things that, um, that you'll want to take a look at and, and um, this is where you find them. But over here on the right hand side, these are things that really pertain to all of our members and our local leagues. So you've got a section for members where we've got things like our diversity, equity, and inclusion, or our DEI policy, um, our nonpartisanship policy, our speak with one voice, and a brand new policy that we have is the youth protection policy, and there'll be more information um, forthcoming about that. That's for um, leagues that are working um, and individuals that are working directly with uh, youth on particular um, programs or uh, within your local league. I do want to highlight we've got what we call our member code of conduct. And this is also something fairly new that we've put together. Um, so which is why I want to draw your attention to it. But what we realized is that it's sort of a best practice in nonprofits to have a code of conduct put together so that it's sort of um, let's our members know, you know, what are the expectations when you become a member of league and what is it that we all agree to do as members of league. So I think it's good to review this to share it with your membership so that uh, we all are starting from a, a point of common ground. And again, I'm just going to sort of show you where all these things are today. We're not going to go through things in great detail, but just would like to make you familiar about where to find them. Then we have a section on advocacy action and programs, things like staying nonpartisan when you're doing your advocacy work, our current coalitions and partnerships, and we'll click on that. So this is something that um, changes throughout time. This might not be our list actually. This is how we develop coalitions and partnerships. I think uh, in a different part of the website, you will be able to find where that list of current uh, coalitions is. Um, let's see, uh, also some voting and elections kinds of things that your best practices for nonpartisanship and voter service. Um, some things about voter service, your, our candidate forums, which we'll also find in our voter service handbook, which is brand new online and Michelle will point that out to you later. Um, 
just some other things, uh, voter guide best practices. So um, this is the place for policies and guidance. And then in addition to our own uh, governance site, we also have provided for you a link to the LWV US management site. And this sometimes is hard to find, I think. Oh, this is where I wanted to back out and show you how to get there. So if you don't have the link and you just go to lwv.org, the easiest way to find this is to scroll all the way to the bottom of their homepage. And right here in the corner is a league management button. And then once you're in the league management site, then right across the top here, the manage your league, communications, mission impact tools, governance, diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's where you'll find your tools that LWVS is providing for us. And I won't go into each one of these, but there's a lot of great information here, um, particularly I think in communications. Um, you'll find your brand and logo standards here, um, different toolkits. Talking points and template plates is always a good place um, to start if you're looking for that kind of a thing. And then um, different guides about how to connect with external audiences. A lot of great communication stuff. So um, this is a, a, a great resource as well. And then the last, oh, we've also provided for you uh, Minnesota Council on Nonprofits Best Practices, another great resource for local leagues. This link here takes you right to this page where there's a whole bunch of different topic areas that you can take a look at um, in looking at your local league as a nonprofit and kind of uh, where you might need some help there. And then lastly, what we wanted to provide for you were the slide decks that uh, were provided during the um, LW, LWV US Council this last uh, June. Um, Michelle and I both attended and thought these sessions were really great on both um, DEI and on nonpartisanship. Those are the areas where we tend to get the most questions from local leagues. So um, we're gonna provide you with those slide decks as well. Um, so the first one here is the um, Powering Democracy Through Our DEI Lens. And I'll let you go through this on your own time, but um, it gives uh, these great bullet points on sort of defining what DEI in practice is like, that it's action oriented, involves work with others, working with partners in our communities by sharing our strengths, uplifting the needs of underrepresented voters, and supporting as allies, not leaders when needed. And you'll see this kind of work throughout the pillars as Michelle described earlier, that this is a lens that we wanna be looking at all of our work through. So here, it, there's a list of questions that I think are great things uh, to go through as you're, as you're looking at your own work as a local league. And then, Uh, here's another set of quest key questions and kind of action steps that you might take. The whole slide deck I think is really informative and I just highlighted a few here for you um, that I thought could give an, will give you a, a taste of what, what it's like. The other one that we wanted to share with you is the nonpartisanship presentation. This is really um, has become a challenge for everyone I think. So it states what our nonpartisan policy um, is here. And then I thought this was a really um, powerful slide. The remaining nonpartisan in your messaging. Nonpartisan does not mean non-political. Um, issues are not partisan. Democracy itself is not partisan. Facts are not partisan. And lastly, what we do as league is we lean into what is good for voters. 
Um, there's some do's and don'ts in your messaging. There's a lot, a uh, big section in here on social media and how to message in social media in a nonpartisan way. And then the last thing I wanted to share from this. I thought this was a fun little um, decision tree that they put together that's really easily understood um, and gets you sort of to the, just the meat of the issue, partisan or nonpartisan your activity. In any case, um, take a look at these. I think that you'll find some good nuggets of information um, to use in your own work as a local league. And I think uh, that's what I've got in government. Great. Thanks so much, Laura. All right, any questions so far? Otherwise I will keep on plowing through here. I'm gonna share my screen now. Where are you? There we go. <clears throat> Michelle? Uh, yeah. Hi, this is Becky from um, White Bear Lake. Hi, Becky. Hi, I have a question on, on any of those um, resources that you shared. Is there, are there any, um, guidance things on, we're doing a silent auction and wondering as a nonprofit, what we need to do in terms of um, receipts for people who bid on items and that kind of thing. Do you have stuff out there uh, for things like that? I don't have anything that specific, but that's a great um, reminder to also just email us if you have some questions. I don't have anything that detailed. So yeah, but I do have some guidance I could send to you, Becky. Without okay, that'd be great, thank you. I, and I don't know for sure that it would be there, but the Minnesota Council on Nonprofits website might also be a place to start for that because I'm guessing that that's a common question. Right, great. thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. great. Okay, so I've joked along the way that I want to rename this section the magic section or something that people want to go to it because this is really where our uh, <clears throat> where the bread and butter is for any of you who are leaders. Um, we um, wanted to show you where we try to put everything um, is on our member resources page. Again, so lwvmn.org. And when you go there, you go to local leagues and scroll down to member resources. And this is where we link to just pretty much anything we send you and anything we talk about is gonna be here. Um, we had our COVID guidance right at the top and sadly we've kept it there. And I was thinking it was kind of old, but here we are again. So, um, <clears throat> so we have that and otherwise it sort of goes in alphabetical order. But we have a whole section, you know, for um, again, kind of by those leader roles, action and advocacy, our capital letters, but also our how to how tos, like our um, observer and lobby core handbooks. If you're wondering and want to be involved in in our uh, lobby core and want to know more about how to lobby, all of this, we've got great information here um, that we train with. But there's a lot of good stuff just sitting there waiting for you to explore, which is very fun. Um, <clears throat> so um, we also have what's um, important on here are our action alerts. If there's any active action alerts, those are on here. All of our program planning guide, people are frequently asking us, how do we uh, change a position, update a position? What about studies? All of that is right here in this program planning guide that um, Nick wrote up and is current and wonderful for you. Um, <clears throat> We also have, um, you know, all other kinds of guidance and best practices. All our applications, like if there's something happening. So, like right now, we have our Youth Civic Engagement Fellowship um, applications are open through the end of September. Those are here. Our action kits and toolkits, and our events. Um, this is a big thing where people will say to us, "Can you post this? Can you post that?" Well, you can post them yourself. They're right there. There's a link. There's a quick way for you to tell us um, and give us guidance for your event so we can put it on our website. So that's right there. Um, and then when you get to league, league admin for all league leaders, this is where the, this is the good stuff, right? Right in here. Um, 
And I want to draw your attention to a few things here. First one is for um, is this is where we really ask you um, if you do nothing else today, we ask you to think about, gosh, have we updated our local league leadership uh, to LWVMN? Because a lot of people have their annual meetings, but then you know the leaders change, and we don't know that. So we'll we'll, we'll get a president who will say, "Well, I've never heard about the president's calls." Well, we didn't know you were president, <laughs> so we can only know what you tell us. So we have a lot of simple, simple forms um, to help you with that. The league leaders is a big one. Another one is our just member update form. We we did go through this kind of at length with our um, membership um, session. But again, if you um, are involved in, in membership at all, um, if your membership folks should really know about that portal because right now the way it is when all the members come in in January, we will get um, from LWVUS, when you enter all that into LWVUS, we just get that one printout. So any other changes throughout the year that are made in your system, unless you're participating in our mini database program, if you were, you'd know it, but we're hoping more people can connect directly to our database, but most people are not. We need you to fill out that member update form. And this is really so important as leaders because we'll, we will get members who will write us from time to time and say, you know, I'm a member, but I'm not getting any of your communication. And that's because we didn't know about them. So please um, take note of that. They're very simple, easy things to do on a monthly basis. Um, certificate of insurance request is a big one for presidents. If you guys are part of our 501c3 and you're uh, doing a parade or something and you need a certificate of insurance, that's free to you. You just have to fill out this form and we'll get it done. Um, another big thing we, we started last year and we've updated now is our local league planning calendar. Uh, this is in PDF form, but you can copy and paste from it, or if you want it in another variety way, you can ask me. But basically what we've tried to do is kind of look at the key planning milestones for league leaders. Um, Kay Erickson, those of you that might know from South Tonka, who a long time ago put together the president's calendar, and it's really league leaders as a whole. And so what we've done is put our, our regular state Zoom planning meetings at the top, and then we started with August and we tried to look and really put in sort of the rhythm of things. What is the work for you as local leagues and what are some of the things that are relevant from the state league? So like a lot of our people powered fair maps are redistricting information's in here. Um, but again, we have things in there, you know, like National Voter Registration Day, reminding people absentee voting is probably starting. Um, we try to, try to anticipate what some of you are going through so that you can really use this um, for your planning. We do a lot, a lot in January happening, uh, when rosters are due and all that kind of stuff. So, so this is a, a kind of a nice way for league leaders to go, gosh, what's coming up again? Oh, that's right. We're, we're going to get that semi-annual survey again. We got to get ready for that. So we hope this is a good tool for you. Um, the other thing then, the other two big things are our handbook. So we are very proud to have um, really at the state league, we are uh, really paperless now. Um, almost everything other than the top of my desk, I guess, is um, in um, on in our Google Drive, but we're also moving everything that's public facing out to the website. And so our lead member handbook, um, thanks to Sue Nuschenko, who's our um, membership chair last year and has really helped to put together a brand new league member handbook. And this is designed for members, but also for leaders. So we have three sections, who we are, what we do, and how we do it. And the how we do it section, this is really where kind of the nuts and bolts of your league. How do I run a good meeting? Um, you know, what about PMPs? How does the, all of this work? Um, is really great stuff. And I want to come back to that, but we had a lot of things. As soon as, you know, you print a paper book, it is out of date. <laughs> and so, and with information um, changing, and also we really tried to bring the LWVUS 
world into this as much as we can. So here we are, chapter one. What is our mission statement again? Our purpose statement? This is all the official verbiage from the LWVUS website again, so that you can have that for your member materials. Now, maybe you want to print this out, and a lot of you still like to print things, and that's fine because there's times when you would, when printing things is still useful. You can hit print, and we do have a software here that allows you to um, be able to print things. If you don't, you know, if you want to lay this out separately, you can, it's really easy to copy and paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. If you want to create something separate, you could always come to us and we can help you with that too. But we really are um, delighted to have now all of this here in real time. Um, and the other great thing is things like the, what we do. So many members wonder, well, what, um, you know, people want to know more about the league and all the all the programs we have. And now, um, in one one page, you can link people to all those different initiatives that we're doing, but also to our other um, voter service information. I also want to check out our press coverage because I'm really proud of our press coverage. Um, if you, I mean, here we are in June. Um, if you just keep going and archive back, uh, we get a lot of press coverage um, from our local and our state league. We try to carry, we love the Mankato Free Press, first of all, they're awesome down there. Um, but again, these are all resources that are great for members to know about too, to, to realize just how, um, how important the league is out there. So uh, this is, we're so excited about this. Now, another part of it I want to share um, in the how we do it. This is really a compilation of if you've got an old handbook somewhere, um, Sue really did a good job of trying to pull uh, so many pieces together. But let's take something like uh, run efficient league meetings, right? These are general things, how to run a board meeting, parliamentary guidelines, um, all kinds of things that are just helpful. But you see what we can keep doing is linking to things. This one links back to that calendar we just looked at. And so we can also keep linking to other things. If people have examples like, you know, hey, we have a new tool that is really helpful. We can share that now, your tools and your best practice um, materials as a link right on this handbook. Um, also, whenever we do change things, you can see that it automatically updates the page. So for example, this was just updated yesterday because we updated the planning calendar. So if you did print something out, you can see what is most recent, which is also awesome. So um, there is a lot here to take in, but it really is all in one nice place for you. The same is true um, <clears throat> with our voter service handbook, which is also a huge feat. <laughs> um, and I really want to commend Laura, and maybe you could say a little bit to Laura about how this voter service handbook came to pass. Sure, and I have to share your commendation with um, Krista and with Nick too for, for putting this together. Um, if any of you have worked with voter service in the past, you might recall that all the information could have been found um, in several different folders on the Google Drive and it wasn't always easy to find. And sometimes I think it was almost impossible to find, but everything now has been gathered into one space. Um, earlier this year, I convened a voter service task force and one of the um, tasks that they uh, completed, what, uh, this was eight different voter service chairs from around the state. And one of the things that they helped out with is reviewing this voter service uh, handbook and pointing out things that might be missing, things that were outdated, things that were inaccurate. So I really feel like we got a lot of eyes on this before it came um, to be uh, what you see now. That being said, it's always a work in progress. So as you're working through it, as you see things that you think should be there and aren't, or things that aren't quite as they should be, please bring that to our attention too, so that we can continuously um, improve this. And so you'll find things about voter registration, uh, candidate forums. Well, and may, I don't want to take over from, from your narrative, Michelle. Why don't you? No, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Keep going. Yeah, you keep going. Um, I mean, really, it's, it's, um, 
it's just a great as we for those of you who have tried to navigate through some of this before <laughs> to have it all here and to have it connect to what is even like guidance to Canada forums during COVID right things like that we're able to really keep this current and um, really proud of our group for doing that we still have templates there's you know a lot of this are templates right for things that um you know people can can use for their own purposes and um, but it's exciting to finally get all of this really accessible to all of you so woohoo Okay. And I would say just as Michelle was demonstrating earlier, there's a lot of things that, that can just be printed as they are, if mm -hmm. you need to, um, or cut, um, cut and paste, but there's also a lot of templates, as she mentioned, that you can really customize it on your own for your own local needs as well as, as mm -hmm. we have been able to in the past. All right, so going back then to member resources. Um, <clears throat> All right, so we were down to, oops, sorry, going too fast. So, the, so this is where these are now, the handbooks. Um, and they're um, in that member resources section. We also have parliamentary procedures things. Um, we did a whole section on DEI, but um, again, there's a, I mean, I know there's a million resources, but really what's really great about our DEI site, and I think a lot of things we put on here is our, um, we try to assimilate what LWVUS has done too. So if you need a quicker dive, you start with us. If you need a deeper dive, you can go into their, into their, uh, into their pieces. And what's great here too is um, like in this section where uh, Shelly Colvin, our DEI chair, has put together wonderful resources that you can really just pick any of these out and and do your own program you know show a quick ted talk or a video pick out a book study um so many things right here um in this section so branding is also in here if you're looking for logos you're looking for flyers um now here is one of my favorite things on the site um and for any of you who are doing communications, this Flickr site is the U LWVUS photos. All of these photos are free to use, to download and use as you like. 1,453 photos, including uh, pictures of uh, Virginia Case getting arrested at a Black Lives Matter rally <laughs> and the John Lewis vigil. I mean, they, they keep adding them, the Freedom Ride, um, Virtual Council, but then National Voter Registration Day and you know, just fun things that um, you can use while some of these are national, they're fun, they're historical, they're, um, you know, rallies and marches. We use a lot of these photos in our, um, you know, in our work that you can use in your work to promote the league generally. So do really take advantage of, uh, that is just a terrific uh, resource there under communications, that LWVUS Flickr site. Um, voter service we talked about. And then here, the newsletter calls and notes. If you get an email about a special power mail, it is probably linked in here. We link to all of our recordings for voter service calls, our advocacy and action calls, all of our president's calls. So again, if you can't make a call, or, and is this is especially important for league leaders when you're doing transitions, you know, is that this is a great place to remind people, hey, you might want to look at the last, you know, three or four all member news, you kind of can find out what's been going on. Um, you might want to listen in on the president's calls. So these are really good things to be able to share out. And again, if for some reason your all member news is, um, if you're not seeing it, um, we have it right here. And this um, is where we really communicate and have been communicating for um, five years <laughs> consistently, the second Monday of every month, um, all this good information that's there for you. So, um, all right, so lots there in member resources. So 
how does that feel? That's a lot, folks. So we want to take a minute now to take a breath, and I'm going to stop sharing and see if you have questions, but also get any feedback from all of you on, you know, certain resources that you think, certain things that you're doing in, in your league that might be good for other leagues to know about, or is there still information that after all these three days, you're like, you know what, I still can't find anything on like, you know, accounting for silent auctions, which is a good one, Becky, that's a good challenge to me now to get that. Um, anything on anyone's mind, questions or thoughts, ideas? We're doing good. Um, thanks, Becky. Yeah, it's great to know that all this is available. And I think that um, that really is the point. If you haven't had a moment to just take that time to walk through our website as a whole. Um, I do want to show you something kind of fun that we're doing is if you are doing a Google search um, and if you were to type in redistricting, uh, just any kind of redistrict, I'm going to put redistricting, if I could spell it, Minnesota on the Google search, look what shows up at the top. Um, we have an ad right at the top search. Um, it goes right to our People Powered Fair Maps Action Kit. Um, and so we um, are, we have a couple of ads out there now because we received a grant from Google. This is all free for us. And so because redistricting is such a big thing right now, um, you know, with the, the new news coming out with the census data, we know that people are asking more questions. So today we've been watching, we have been getting a ton of hits. So I had Kristen put this new bar up <laughs> at the top too. So that if just generally people are like, what's going on with redistricting? What is this redistricting? And we're, you know, they can click here to subscribe to get more information. So, um, so we're really trying to make our website, not just for uh, us, but also for voters. We keep our election stats here. Um, we've got things about civil discipline course, know your news, all of our leagues are represented here. Um, we have put a lot with our centennial and the news and events. This is also our Minnesota voter blog is really an important spot. This is where we uh, post any news, big news, press releases that are going out. A great place, a really nice place for new members to say, you know what, why don't you just take a look through the blog because you'll see all the important big things that we're working on. So, all right, I Michelle, see. Michelle, if, yeah. if you could click back on, keep oh, yeah. sharing, click back on member resources. All right. I was in a session this afternoon with Kristen on communications and I learned that one of her very next um, projects that she'll be working on um, is making this particular page with all the information. I mean, just quickly scroll down and see all the words that we have and all the um, links that we have. She's gonna work on making it even more visually appealing and um, sectioning it out so it's even easier to help find the section that, that uh, you, you need to find. So she's gonna be doing some little reorganization on that. But I thought that was a nice little news flash to share with everyone. Yeah, and it's fun because in People Powered Fair Maps, our redistricting initiative, we call them her clickies. I'm like, Kristen, make me a clicky. And these are clickies, right? Quick way to say, um, to have a visual that goes with um, an explanation of something. So we can just have one line that says, we joined the lawsuit, but isn't that a lot more pleasing to read right there? Oh, wow, look at that. There's the cover of the lawsuit, read more. So um, that's the kind of thing that she'll do on that page now is give us more clickies, Kristen. <laughs> so um, it is amazing that information um, consumption is you know something we keep working on because it, we've got so many words in our life. How do we? How do we make it appealing to everybody? So thanks, Laura, for pointing that out. Sure. Um, there's a question in chat, Michelle, does the league have a speakers bureau? We do not have a speakers bureau per se. Um, we um, try from time to time, for example, with redistricting now, Paul has been training people to do, do some of the redistricting talks as well as the mapping functions that we're doing. Um, so, but we, 
you know, um, it's the Bureau has pretty much been me and Nick and Paul. So if anybody wants to know more, wants to be speak at, speak about the league uh, in any capacity, feel free to reach out. But I think part of the challenge is people generally want something specific, you know, so uh, we go, there was a lot of centennial talks at one point, which we did. Now it's redistricting. So, um, you know, kind of finding those topics is what are important to people. I will say I have done, we really probably easily do, you know, four or five talks a month, um, including uh, Medtronic, Anderson Windows. We've had a lot of corporations reach out. Um, Medtronic is actually going to work with us on a uh, voter on voter registration day. They are going to do some things at their uh, some voter registration at their manufacturing plants and do an online campaign at their corporate headquarters. So they they're it's amazing. They're really organized and active. A lot of the um, employee groups are really um you know, grabbing on to being informed. So I think this is really a huge uh, area for us when we talk about Vote 411. We'll really have an opportunity to expand those partnerships with businesses and um, other organizations. So, um, all right. So again, if anyone you know missed it tonight, you didn't really, because it's all being taped and you'll be able to watch it um, in the comfort of your own home. So we um, I hope that you will also share these around for anyone who needs to be informed. And um, we're always welcome for any questions. And um, just lastly, I do wanna say uh, one other quick thing as we close here. Um, so we will have a survey that will be in your, you'll get an email next week that will have all these links, um, uh, including those two slide decks. The two slide decks uh, Laura showed you from LWUS are not yet on our website or anywhere. We will have those uh, linked up for you. But the survey will have an opt out if you do not want your contact information shared with other local league leaders. So what we were planning to do is, and this would be league leaders only, if you're identified you know, as a president or you know, membership chair, advocacy chair, we want to share your contact information with like people in your world so that uh, people can do more networking. People have really asked for that. They're like, Cash, can I find out all the other treasures? Because I just have a few questions. And, and I think it's a great idea. And um, information and pri data privacy being what it is, we've struggled with that. But, but we sort of, in our last round, um, of discussions in our surveys found that people seem very receptive to sharing league leadership information and that we would um, also then, but give people that chance to opt out. So in that survey that when you get it, if you can take it, it'll be brief, but it'll be a place where you can let us know that you don't want your information shared with fellow league leaders. We only share our information with league leaders or league members, we wouldn't share it with anyone else. Um, Barb Bereni, did you have a question? Yeah, what, what's going to be the mechanism for sharing? So we, we would, what we would do is just share via an, um, an email spreadsheet um, to, so I would say the presidents would get all the president information, for example. Um, we could, it's a good question, like we could send it through our power mail system. Um, which um, comes through data bank, now that I think about that, because that certainly has probably an extra level of security to it. Um, but I don't know how else we would, you know, that would generally be, we won't put it up publicly, but we would share it just among those leaders. Good, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Good question, good question. And I will also um, share info, find out more about the best and most secure way to share that information. All right, any other questions? So Marty Mix, the firearms up 
updates study committee would like yeah. to have materials for the local leagues with the PowerPoint to conduct their consensus meetings this year. And, and Marty, we could certainly get this stuff up on the website too. I that think. would be wonderful. We're not, we're on our drafts, <laughs> rewriting and rewriting, um, yeah. but we want it to look nice. So maybe Kristen can help us with that. But yeah. more importantly, it's just, I wanna make sure that all the local league presidents know that there'll be a spot that they can go to to get the information. Plus, you know, I think we will have a couple of recorded meetings that will be, you know, seeing which one looks better and um, comes across better. And then right. local leagues can show that if they don't have time for their own members to do this themselves. Wonderful. But it's, it's important that we can hear from everybody because well, I'm so impressed. 23 of the 35 leagues did conduct study or uh, conduct interviews with the police chiefs or sheriffs in town. And we really appreciate it. Yeah, that's great. Wonderful. All right. Yeah, Tina. Uh, yeah, I just have a question. So uh, once in a while, we have a, uh, a problem, quote unquote, of finding a topic for the members meeting. So, you know, it's sometimes challenging to find a good, you know, good idea, good speaker, good whatever. So is there a document that maybe could be compiled from uh, local leagues where it's not necessarily the contact of the speaker that we need to get together with, but at least the topic mm -hmm. and, and possibly which league had them. So then we can connect with the person from that league. Like, for example, um, we had the, um, uh, the Just Deeds project people that I'm connected with through my work and they came and did the presentation, but I am sure any other league would love to have them and talk about, you know, the, the covenants or, you know, the, the Just Deeds projects or whatnot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's great, Tina. I, I think that would be a great idea because we, we do, um, because so many things are done on Zoom too, they can also be applicable to so many other leagues a lot of times. But even if it's in person, um, I know like our, our climate change and um, environmental task force, they've got a lot, you know, a lot, they would love to, you know, go out and talk. So I think that's a really fun um, document to start to compile and something we can put out into our local leagues, even through the president's uh, call, Laura, we might be able to, to collect ideas of, of good ideas like that. Yeah. Thank you, Tina. Great idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Excellent presentation. Thank you so much. Yeah, you bet. Marty? Yeah, Tina. Are, is Tina in uh, the metro area? Yes. Okay. Um, and then you are part of the 19 leagues that are part of the uh, seven county metropolitan area and the mm -hmm. council of metropolitan area leagues puts on three programs a year so that's three programs you don't have to do those there's going to be one in october one in january and one in march so that that helps you a little bit um one's on water also the upper mississippi river i i think gretchen was here but um they also put on programs that are excellent that can apply to anyone in the whole state um, because it's all about the Mississippi River. Oh, there you are, Gretchen. <laughs> yeah, I was just yeah. Um, We do have meetings that are pre-recorded, and so they're on our website, and you can find those as well. And I'd be happy to talk to anybody that is interested in that. So give me a give me an email. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. our, our league is kind of in, in transition right now, and we don't have a president or co-president, so we're kind of governed by our own committee. Um, you know, and so uh, we kind of divvy up our responsibilities for each meeting, so it would definitely be helpful to us to either join another league with their meeting or just, you know, uh, grab some good ideas. So thank you guys for sharing. Yeah, we'll get more information too, Tina. I love this idea. I think everyone would love that. Thank you. Um, yeah, Barb Anderson. Um, I just wanted to mention that if people are putting their um, events on your website, that's a, a good source. You probably have a record of those historically. Yeah, good idea to look and see what people have been doing. Mm -hmm. Great. Good ideas, yay. All right, anything else before we sign off? Otherwise, thank you again, everybody for taking the time to learn and know we're here and use that website. All right, take care, everybody.
to see everyone. Thank you. Thank you.